Welcome to a place where the stories of black badass motherfuckers are told. Well, not exactly as they happen, but you'll get the idea. My name is Bass Reeves and this is my posse. If you haven't heard of me, that's a shame because I'm the baddest black crime fighting motherfucker in the wild west. I got a hell of a story to tell you. I might exaggerate a bit, but it's still a solid story nonetheless. Let me take you back to the very beginning. I was born in a manger. Mmm, Bass Reeves. I'm just kidding. I was born into slavery. I've been picking cotton with my mom and uncle since I was a baby. I didn't really know much about my father, other than his name was Paul Bunny, and the fact that he was a free man. Our masters nicknamed him A-Boy when he came around, Playboy Bunny. One day, he called me out to the porch and patted me on the head. He said he was going away for a while, cause he needed to lay the swaggy on these bitches. No pun intended, but uh, that motherfucker literally bounced, and I never saw him again. I had no idea what he meant, but it sounded cool. I even started telling everyone at the plantation that when I escaped, I was laying the swaggy on these bitches. People thought it was a good idea, but they also had no idea what I meant. I remember after a long day out in the field, my mama called me out to the porch. Son, I was called into work. Look, I need you to watch over this chicken. Wow, a pet. Thanks, mama. I never had one before. Oh, um, yes, a pet. She said his name was Nuggets. We did everything together. I even gave him baths. Bass! Yes, Mama? I left some bath water ingredients out for Nuggets. Salt, pepper, lemon, and garlic. Be sure to put them in the water, got it? Yes, Mama? About a week later, Mama surprised me with an amazing dinner. Mama! This is great! Thank you! I haven't seen Nuggets all day. Have you seen them? Oh, um, about that. She explained to me that apparently Nuggets was behind on child support payments and crossed the road to get to the other side child support office to discuss child support payment options. She said that they estimated that he helped produce over a thousand eggs so you could probably imagine his child support payments were pretty high. Anyways, Nuggets went to jail and couldn't make bail. Because he owed so much money to his baby mamas, the courts decided to slaughter him and sell his meat. Mama said that by the time she made it to the courthouse, it was too late. So she just decided to buy us meat and cooking for me. She promised that it was what Nuggets would have wanted and to eat up before he got cold. Uncle, I can't believe Nuggets is gone. Yeah, I'm sorry little nephew, I heard about him crossing the road. Uncle! Get back to work! You done fucked up! Now I gotta cut you boy! That evening, as I laid in bed, all I could think of was revenge. Then my uncle came into the house in a panic. Fuck! Pack our shit, we gotta go, girl! Apparently, my uncle also wanted revenge for what he did to me, and decided to sex down Snaggletooth's girl and mama earlier that night. Snaggletooth walked in on them. What the fuck? My girl? And my mama? You motherfucker! At that moment, as my uncle was getting out of bed butt naked, he must have paused and thought, well, technically you're right. Then he did whatever you would do in that situation. He put his motherfucking dick over his shoulder, claimed no homo in advance, and commenced to ass with him. I'm pretty sure after he laid Snaggletooth out, he thought to himself, I just laid the swaggy on these bitches. With Snaggletooth out, we snuck out with our belongings that evening. Days later, we arrived at my mama's friend's place. Their mute son, Toronto, took me under his wing and taught me how to survive in the wild. Toronto taught me how to hunt animals, starting with wild balonies. Those small red bastards are fast and slippery as hell. But if you catch one and get past their tough skin, you can eat it right on the spot. They're actually pretty good with a little bit of smoke or fried with cheese over a fire. Toronto also taught me how to track individuals by looking at their tracks. Naturally, with tracks like this, you'd think moonwalking, right? 
But no, it was a man crawling after he got shot. Yeah, I sucked at it at first, but after a few tries, I started to recognize the patterns and was able to successfully reenact how the tracks were created. Something Toronto couldn't teach me was how to talk to small animals telepathically. He ordered animals to attack, striking fear into the hearts of criminals. He also used telepathy as a personal food service. We became legendary in our parts. One day, out of the blue, we got a knock. This fox explained that she heard about us and needed our help tracking down outlaws for the U.S. government. We agreed to help and she handed us our first assignment. Alpha Alpha, I know this cornball. When we were in school, he kept smiling like a clown, facial expression looking silly, and he kept asking me what kind of horse you drive. I know you paid. I know you got buku girls from all that swag you done laid. Hell yeah, sign us. The fuck? Well, Toronto, let's get to work. Yup, that's him. He's got three raccoons with him. Let's go and lay the swag down on these bitches. Toronto, hold up. No killing, bro. Gotta bring criminals to justice. Sup, fellas. I'm Bass Reeves. Bass, I remember you. You're going to die, but because I'm in a good mood, I'll grant you one request. I need my horse. Bring him his horse. Oh my god, I need a horse like that. An unusual last request, but you may borrow my tent. Can you ask her if she has any friends? I'd like to take long walks on the beach and read romance novels. I'll put in a good word for you, bro. Oh, hold up. I got a text message coming through, baby. What is it? It's a telegraph. Someone sends an encoded message on one end and I receive it as a series of beeps. I can respond by tapping codes on this here knob. Let's see what it says. What does it say? Oh, um, uh, a friend of mine's complaining about it being hot where she's at. Enough about that. Tell me more about you. Bass, are you ready to die? I'm always ready, but man law mandates that I set my brother out first. What are you talking about? Let me see that. <clears throat> to he? To he? Do you mean the? Oh, um, <clears throat> here man, you finish reading it. This stupid western font is hard to read. The man law bible's mandate number one. 
The captain shall provide it, the punani, to virgin relatives when death is imminent. My partner Toronto has never been with a woman, so this mandate is relevant. Okay, that's easy. Let him bang out the girl that's already in the tent. I would, but mandate number two states, no two dicks shall touch, whether directly or indirectly. If he bangs her out, the indirect dick touching applies here since I banged her earlier. This is ridiculous. Bring him a stupid horse. Listen closely, dude. I said posse. P-O-S-S-E. I was able to get us some more time together, but need to figure out how to escape. Why don't you use the telegraph? Well, damn. Plan B. I'm going to sneak out back and get Toronto. Be sure to be ready to roll when you hear me call for you. Oh yeah, um, what's your name? Don't worry about me. I'm staying. Are you sure? I seen the way these dudes were staring at you. Trust me. I'll be fine. Hey, buddy. It's me. We're going to break out of here. They're still talking. Toronto, get the horse. What's the hold up? Oh, goddamn! He's straight slow grinding her with slow jams playing in the background. He's going at a rate of about one pump every five seconds. At that rate, it'll take him about 30 minutes to finish. I wonder if breaking him up will break some sort of man law. Yup, it's right here. Thou shalt not cock block. And pulling him off the horse is a total cock block. Maybe we should make a run for it. Oh, let me check to see what they're doing. What, what the hell? Oh, girl's a ninja. Oh, hold on, baby. If you kill Alfalfa, we won't be able to bring him to justice. Plus, he hates on us in every episode of this show. We need him in future episodes to keep the plot lines interesting and funny. Hey, I'm right here. Understood, but I want half the ransom award. Deal. Alright, Toronto. Call him in. Fuck! I may be the villain in your stupid story, but I'm still a hero in my mind. I know villains say this all the time, but I'll be back. Let's see who's next on the list. Snaggletooth Q. This is a dream come true. Been itching for the opportunity to get revenge on this dude. Let's roll out. We took our positions, and right on cue, Snaggletooth shows up to the Old Town Saloon. After ordering and chugging down a drink, Q made his way over to my table. I got next. <laughs> Call. Read him and weep. All black, bro. You lost, bro. Three of a kind. Give me my money. Man, I always wanted to do this, but I'm all in, bro. Call. You called me all black again. A royal flush? You set me up! <laughs> Toronto, hit it. You actually know me. I'm still the same G, but I've been low-key. Hated on by dudes with no swag, no cheese, no meals, no teeth, no girls, no seals, no good meals, or no deals. Mad at me because I finally broke free from slavery. Got a crib full of records and telegraphs and crafted by the Japanese. Think I'm letting my dough freeze? I'm making cheese, dog, please. Look at you down on both knees. Yeah, I put drugs in your whiskey. Who you think brought you the shimmy, the swaggy, and them groupies? So what do you say to somebody you hate or anyone trying to bring slavery your way? Want to solve things in a bloodier way? I mean, Django did say the tag them motherfuckers before he blew them away. When I was a slave, you weren't helping me. But now I work for a government agency and you won't get relief from me. You're going to jail today, buddy. Toronto, call him in. Well, he's out and off to jail. I wonder, if you have one tooth, do you floss that joint? 
Anyways. Bass, I found you. Just send another outlaw off to jail. Let's uh, celebrate, Uncle. I'm sure we can find something to get into close by. Alright, Uncle Ben, don't be up in here looking thirsty. But it's hot out here and my throat's parched, though. Excuse me, brother man. <laughs> Can you tell me how to get to the, the other side of the road? Yeah, man, just turn around, walk 20 feet, and you're right there. <laughs> but that's what the other guy said. <laughs> Alright, Uncle, need to fill you in. This is a brothel. Don't look the girls in the eyes. They're like little medusas. You turn into stone and they come in for the kill and take all your money. Instead, look at them using your peripherals. I hear you, little nephew, but my dick is harder than Chinese arithmetic right now. Trying to go to the back? To the VIP lounge? Um, excuse me. Oh, oh shit! Huh. Yum! <laughs> you can get it, too. <laughs> Let's go, honey. Bass, I'll be right back. Man, I didn't look her in the face and she wanted more. Uncle, if you're gonna get with them, definitely look them in the face. Hi, Zaddy. You are my children's? I can be whatever you want for the evening. Cool. So, um, do you like cocktails? Oh, yes, yeah, Zaddy. I love stories, especially about cocks. Huh? What? <laughs> Let's do this. Are you enjoying yourselves, fellas? If my uncle's happy, so are we. Got any stories, bro? Definitely. Two outlaw sons were hiding out at their mom's cabin two miles west of here. Legend is a man named Bass Reeves put on a disguise, walked up to the cabin, and convinced the mom to let him stay at their place for the evening. While the sons were asleep, Bass handcuffed and dragged them to jail. Legend is that he captured over 3,000 outlaws and only killed 14 out of self-defense. That Bass dude is a smooth motherfucker. If you see Bass, can you hand him his next assignment? The fuck? You know the fox? Yep, she's a smooth motherfucker too. Tell me about it. Alright posse, it's time to make some money. If we get your name, we're going to bring you to justice. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the link above. Every day, there's a black badass motherfucker being born. The chances the black bam gene skipped over you are pretty high, but it's never too late to become a black bam if you're willing to put in the work. Well, <laughs> unless you're not black, that is. But you don't need to be black to be a bam. You just got to know how to work it. Until you earn the B, you're just an ass motherfucker, I guess. Well, anyways, good luck, and keep me posted.